Many of us who come from a traditional aviation background tend to approach these problems assuming that somehow safety and innovation aren't compatible. That's not my experience, and I don't think that's the experience we've had in the FAA. One of the real keys, particularly for those of us from a traditional aviation background, is to make sure we're listening to the applicant to hear the problem through what they want to do, not necessarily the assumptions around traditional aviation. It's sometimes very hard to separate yourself from those assumptions. So one of the most important things after listening is to figure out typically what an applicant is asking for is slightly different than what we've done in traditional aviation, but we can still apply the same core safety principles. So the key is hearing the problem, understanding the core safety principle that needs to be applied to enable this innovative technology, and then working on creative solutions to get there. Our main system enabled by uh, the advanced technology in digital, uh, artificial intelligence as well, electrification can only get better and better. At the same time, it's getting cheaper and cheaper. In consequence, what we see is that a lot of people use drones for all sorts of reasons. So the question is, using all these drones, while it's useful, uh, it also poses a lot of risks, such as uh, aviation as well as a public risk, a personal risk. And at the same time, there are also security concern and privacy concern. As a regulator, what can we do? Uh, on the one hand, you can enable it. At the same time, if you don't regulate it, you'll be dangerous. So if you regulate it with the current instruments, uh, aviation instrument, it'll be, become too over-regulating. Therefore, we need to find a balance. At the same time, we take a very agile regulatory process and, and looking at a risk-based methodology to try to regulate it and adapting, not just adopting, but adapting from the current aviation uh, safety instruments and to try to adjust to what we, what we see is necessary. Where we cannot, then what we do is we set up a, what we call a sandboxes uh, for the industry as well as regulatory authority to go and trial the new technology before we implement it. I think the most important thing to recognize about UTM or unmanned traffic management is to realize it's really an ecosystem of a number of services, some of which may be provided by the regulator, some of which may be provided by the air navigation service provider, and some of which may be provided by applicants or other third party services. And really the key to this is to identify the performance characteristics of that service and to ensure harmonization across not only the users of the service, but the other services and potentially other regulatory authorities. So how do we enable it? We really open the door for those services and we define the performance. Our main traffic management system is an important initiative to allow the beneficial and safe use of the drone. Uh, in big country like the uh, America, China, Australia, federated approach is probably the best thing to do. But for us in Singapore, such a small country with a limited airspace, we opted to go for a centralized approach. To implement our main traffic management system, first you need to have a regulatory framework to do that and take a very long-term view of what the UTM will eventually evolve. And from there, we get all the agencies involved in using the unmanned traffic management system as well as the industry to define the requirement, identify the key components of it, and then we do a step-by-step -step spiral approach, outcome-based, to develop the system and implement it accordingly. At the same time, we partner with the agencies like the FAA or the Eurocontrol to learn from one another so that we can expedite the implementation of the UTM. Well, the most important principle to us in the FAA and across the FAA, whether it's on the regulatory side or it's on the air traffic side, is it's one airspace. And we have to ensure that we set the minimum performance standards and then we allow equitable access to that airspace. So there will be times that we choose to offer services in um, 
some sort of airspace that isn't fully integrated. But our ultimate goal is to ensure that as these aircraft want to operate in fully integrated airspace, that we enable that safely and that we allow for the equitable access of all operators in the airspace. When we look at the, the future of the UTM, what our vision is that the UTM and the air traffic management system, ATM, will eventually merge. To us, there are three big things that we probably need to, need to consider. First is to make sure that we have the buy-in from the public. Public acceptance is important because it's founded on safety and it is not founded on anything else. Safety is a, is a predominant one. Of course, drone has other aspects of the security, has aspect of the, of the privacy as well. Second is to have a very agile process to do the work. Uh, and agile, in not just in the regulatory framework, but also allow the industry to continue to evolve. And then as you move, and we adapt it based on the outcome uh, that we want and continue to work. And thirdly, and, uh, and most importantly, is also, uh, as mentioned many times, is international collaboration. Learn, unlearn, relearn with, with our partners, both international uh, counterparts as well as the industry.